Welcome to the All About Nothing podcast. The views expressed on this program are the opinions of the hosts. Listeners are encouraged to follow the show on Twitter at A-N underscore pod or at theallaboutnothing.com. You can email the show at theallaboutnothing.com. You may also call and leave the show a message at 8036720533. Thank you for listening. All right, welcome. Welcome, everybody, to another All About Nothing podcast. We are live on Facebook. And of course, we got Zach King, Trent Clark, also here. Everybody, welcome, welcome, yeah. welcome. It's been another week, right? It has. Another Absolutely. Has it, has it been a, another good week or, or just another week? Well, we got to watch Trump look stupid uh by the british reporter and that was hilarious that is also that is very true that was uh that was definitely uh a fun a, a fun you know what and we'll talk about i've got i've got plenty of clips from that as well because it was uh i don't honestly understand why it is that he signs up for these uh these interviews because there's no there's no they're going to go well right i mean no. in his mind do you do you think in his mind he goes, this is the one British guy that probably likes me besides you know Boris? <laughs> Why are you Honestly. asking me the mean questions now? Come on, <laughs> like does it? I can't understand how he doesn't understand. Like like he's got to know what he's signing up for with these interviews. Is there is there anyone in that White House enough to go? You know what? We're gonna skip that one, or we're gonna skip that one. And I get it. He he no. wants to make it seem as though <laughs> he is trying to appease, I guess, all of the media. Maybe I don't know. Mm. It, it's just they were at, they're Axios, yeah. right? That was the yeah, that was Axios. So I don't. I don't. He had his papers prepared in the his uh, who has the shit shit scenario, as we called it last time. His press right. secretary was in the, in the room. You see her for. She was in the. Yeah, but she can't come stop. Can't come stop him. (laughs) Like, like, what would you do? Would you just tackle him? He wanted to answer some questions. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. but it 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 didn't remotely go well at all. Like, I in in my head, like, there's got to be somebody in that press group of uh, that works for the White House. Someone, someone that's in in that organization that should be able to go. And, and like, as soon as something starts to go away, the, the wrong direction, like you would think that someone would just jump at the opportunity to stop the president or, or like right. they're standing off camera somewhere with like a big sign that just says, no, you dope, just stop talking. Or maybe well, you an earpiece. And they know they can't do that because the who's ever recording is going to turn that camera. <laughs> hey, yeah. yeah. I'm going to get that. Uh. And they're definitely like, oh, you want to do that here? Okay. <laughs> Well, Can I'll, you please I'll be edit honest. it in the Oval Office? I'll be yeah. honest. Some of that, some of the, some of the Axios like camera angles for as far as I could tell for Trump were just awful. Like <laughs> they came, like it was one of it was one of these views that was kind of like from behind his head, but it made his it made his face look like. like I now understand why it is that he stands, why it is that he stands the way that he does. You know, where he's kind of like perched over. You know, he's kind of like. There's this, there's this, his legs are down here and he's kind of like doing this lean over thing. <laughs> I think I understand it's his head. It's, it's gravity is pulling his head further down. Well, so he has to and stand it, you that can way. definitely see his hair acting like a baseball hat, <laughs> the brim of one. Like it's so long. I was like, damn, they'll show this damn. man from the side like that. It, it was, bothers it me was, is where the tan, where, the, where, you, where you could read it, because it was in like 4K, but where oh, the, yeah. where the makeup stops. Is on his pure white scalp, like paper white scalp. Oh yeah, like you, yeah. It was someone couldn't have gone in there, done something about that. It was, this it man was, up. it was, it was a very, it was a very interesting interview. And I, again, I am thoroughly impressed that uh, that he he went through it. And honestly, I I wonder if he went through it because in the end of it, do you think he even remembers what happened in that interview? Because I don't think there was any more mentions of it after the fact. I, I think oh, wow. I think he finished the interview, shook the guy's hand, and walked out. 
And I think that was as far as it went. I don't, I don't think there was any recognition of holy crap on that interview. And uh, the results are going to be pretty telling for the rest of the week. He walked out and just went, nailed it. <laughs> I had my papers and everything. Nailed it. <laughs> Got you. <laughs> just like Who we did in 1976 when we won our independence, I owned that British guy. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was just it was just a weird week. Hey, you know what? Before uh, before we jump into everything, I just want to make sure that uh, uh, if you're listening to us on any one of the podcasts, please make sure that you subscribe, rate, and review. That is what uh, gives us the potential of one day possibly making some out of this. You know. Um, also, also, please you can share follow- us on Facebook. That would be great. Yeah, please. Please, that would be amazing. That would be that would be fantastic. Um, so I, I I think because we've already started it, I kind of want to jump into the uh, Jonathan Swan from Axios. Um, it was uh, we we've already started talking about it, but if you haven't seen it, the entire thing's available on YouTube, and and I can surely link it in the page. But if you haven't seen it yet, it is easily one of the most uncomfortable things I've ever gone through because. I want to see Trump uncomfortable, but I, I don't like him try. I, I don't like watching him defend himself with stupidity or with just terrible answers. Um, so I, I'm going to I'm going to play these. And, I, and unfortunately, these, these are kind of long, but I, I, we'll, we'll stop and, and, and interrupt them as we go through, because um, they are they, they're just incredibly I don't know. They're just difficult. So I'm just going to start with this was the this was the you opening. Can see to, his faces. <laughs> this is the opening to the interview. Uh, so I so we'll just we'll just start it. Over the years, I've heard you talk about your adherence to a philosophy called positive thinking. This is the mantra that if you believe something, if you visualize it, um, then it will happen. To an extent, I also think in terms of the downside. Right. Uh, I do. I've, I've been given a lot of credit for positive thinking, but I also think about downside. Because do you think he gets enough credit for the positive thinking? Anyone? Uh, no. I don't know. I don't know if we can call it any kind of thinking, but yes, continue. Sure. Positive thinking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's only a fool, doesn't. To what extent do you think that that positive thinking mindset is suitable to handling? the worst pandemic that we've seen in a century. I think you have to have a positive outlook. Otherwise, you would have nothing without a positive outlook. I think we've done an incredible job between the ventilators and stopping very infected people from China, putting the ban on China, which frankly, nobody wanted me to do. Practically nobody, because it was very early in January. (laughs) Uh, Putting the ban on Europe, not an easy thing to do. When you put a ban on Europe, that's a big thing. We would have uh, probably lost hundreds of thousands of lives more had I not done that. And all of the experts, every one of them, not one of them wanted to do it. They thought it was too severe. Uh, three months later, they're all saying, I'm glad you did it. <laughs> well, did can, you say- can we say, yeah, can we say real quick, uh, uh, no professionals def- definitely wanted travel stopped yeah. from basically every country outside of the U.S. For right. Reason. Is he right. thinking back to when he was trying to ban Muslims from other countries? And no, no, said, no, Le- you can't do that. Yeah, no, legitimately, he's he in, in January, he did initiate a ban on on people flying from China to the United States when when initially when when it hit his desk. Uh, when, when it hit his desk, this one didn't reach my desk. Yeah, when it when it hit his <laughs> desk, he he actually said. Uh, did initiate a ban on travel from China. Now that did not stop more than 40,000 people from continuing to fly into the United States, despite a travel ban. Um, I'm told, or, or what I've read is that some of those were citizens. Some of those were foreign nationals that were here or that were trying to get back into the United States because he had issued a ban. I mean, it was basically a rush to, to fly out of China back into the United States. Exchange um, students. I know a couple of them, a couple of instances. Uh, one from Clemson. Uh, she came running back to uh, because of it, but they were still, yeah, letting people in. If you're if you're a citizen, I remember that. Yeah. Well, and 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 then of course, as it turned out, when they started doing actual genetic testing on the 
uh, on the virus, <clears throat> the people seem to be most affected, like say, like in New York or New Jersey, that in the northeastern United States, um, the virus or the genetic makeup of the virus that they found in almost everyone was the virus that came over from Europe not necessarily the one that came out of China. So most of the people that were infected by the virus got a strain that had been mutated and came over from Europe. I don't know why I'm pointing that way. I think Europe is actually technically- Maybe it's on the map that, that way, way, maybe. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if you're looking at me, I'm your map, it's over here. And technically, didn't Europe <laughs> have more deaths than China? And we'll so, and, and that's-, we'll and that's yeah, that, that's probably one of the issues is the fact that we can't really get a good number of actual recorded cases versus deaths in China, because uh, at some point, we're pretty sure that China just stopped counting. Same with Iran, same with same with North. I mean, North Korea just recently reported that they have had like one or two positive infections uh, from the COVID-19, which, you know, are we to believe that? How do you, you know? You could you could believe it in the sense that and nobody want to go to your country to begin with. <laughs> well, or or you just look at it, you can believe it based on the fact that that's what they reported. I believe they reported that. That's exactly that's exactly how I take that. I believe yeah, people that are that trying to get important. out of your country into China. Yeah. The, the, no. So I'm, yeah. Again, you'll never know. It's what they report. You hope, hope yeah. you would hope that there is definitely no free press over there. It's uh, yeah. Exactly. So the interview continued. Because we test so much, we show cases. So we show many, many cases. We show tremendous number of. I know you're smiling when I say no, that. No, I mean, <laughs> our third countries don't test like we do, so they don't show cases. Just a couple of points on that. I wasn't going to continue on the testing, but you said it. So. We're testing so much because it's spread so far. What he was trying to say there is, uh, I wasn't going to continue doing the testing, but you're digging your own grave. So we're just going to keep going, Erica. We're testing we so just... much because we have the ability to test. Okay. Because we but, came up with tests. South Korea. Jonathan, we weren't even, we didn't even have a test. When I took over, we didn't even have a test. Now, in all what, fairness, what there have a was test? no test The virus didn't this. exist. How would you have a <laughs> test? There was no test for this. We didn't have a test. Because there was no test. In, in a very short order, we got one test, we got other tests. It was broken the first Many one. of those tests are now obsolete because we've, right. you know, it's called science. And science. all of a sudden. Whoa, better. careful, careful. He did say the S word. So you, you uh, any Republicans <laughs> listening, you're going to want to just pretend to leap that out. Because we tested so many people, 55, 60 million people very soon, we get cases. You test. Some kid has even just a little runny nose, it's a case. And then you report many cases. So we look like we have more cases than massive countries yeah. like China, which by the way, doesn't report as you know. Well, I, like, I don't put any stock in China's no, no, figures. The point, is, yeah. the point is, because we are so much better at testing than any other country in the world, we show more cases. Yeah. Okay. So, so I do want to explain. And, and one of the things that, and this, this took me a while to wrap my head around, but I, I think I have finally got it down. The president wants to report the number of deaths or a percentage of death based on the number of cases that we have in the United States. This is, this is the point at which our continued efforts in testing benefits him because as we continue to test more people and we come up with more negative test cases or positive test cases, it doesn't matter. But that with the number of positive test cases, this benefits the president in the sense that the, the uh, percentage of death based on the number of cases is considerably lower in the United States than some countries around the world some countries being third world countries that have to rely on other nations for their healthcare systems in general um, but the united states is slightly lower than say uh it based again purely based on the number of deaths per capita in that capita is the number of cases of testing but yes well it's it's kind of like he speaks on it's a thousand deaths a day right now Okay, right. so you, you know people are infected. What are you doing about it? There's 328 million people in the United States. Right. You, what, how many tests have, have they completed? 600,000 or something like that? 
or was it in, just... in the United States? Yeah. Number, I, I didn't look it up specifically, but I, I believe that the he number says it in of, that interview, in that interview. Yeah. Yeah. The, the number we, the United States has probably, I don't know, there's, there's been many millions of test cases. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's, it's way up there, but we also have, you know, hold on, let me see. Uh, the United States has 5.2 million confirmed positive test cases since January. So, um, you know, the percentage, so let's, let's assume we're somewhere in the 45 to 45 million to 50 million test cases actually conducted in the United States. That is still only what uh, an eighth of the population in the United States, something like that. You know, that's, yeah. that's not, you know, that's, that's not a whole lot to brag about considering we're, we're, we're well six months into this. And then so, you have to wait. Yeah. And what's funny is there's people I saw, um, Alyssa Milano tested negative three times for COVID and then right. uh, took the antibodies test and she had it. She had the, she had the COVID antibodies in her system, which shows you had it. Test didn't catch it. Right. Yeah. yeah it's, it, it, um, it's, it's just absurd. It's, it's here, here's, here's the discussion about the, uh, and, and this is where I was able to derive exactly what it is the president means when he's talking about death versus, uh, or death in relation to case versus population. I, the, the figure I look at is death. And death is going up now. Okay, now it's a thousand a day. If you look at death. Yeah, it's going up look, again. Let's look. Daily death. Take a look at some of these charts. I'd okay. love to. We're going to look. Let's look. And if you look at death. Yeah. I just love how Y'all smug. Please go look is. at this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's, take, yeah. let's just take a look. Come on, bring it. You, you, you have <laughs> to see it to truly get, get it. Is it. Watching it as part of it, hearing it, you're like, oh, yeah, well, it's normal. When you see this guy's faces, when you see Trump's like getting more red than orange at times because he's getting he's getting a little like, yeah I, I got papers here like, yeah. yeah he 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 walked in with like four or five different eight by or eight and a half by eleven sheets of paper that had graphs on them and things like that so he 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 came to fight start to go up again well right here. The United States is lowest in numerous categories. Uh, we're lower than the world. Lower than we're the lower world. Than, we're, <laughs> <laughs> we're lower than the world. Yes. That, that, yes, because we're be. not. We're not a part of the world. We're not a part of the world. We're lower <laughs> than the world. It is. It is so uncomfortable to listen to this, but it, we have to continue. Europe. In Take what? In what? Take a look. <laughs> He's asking them. He says we're lower than Europe. And and Jonathan Swan, the reporter for Axios, asks him, "In what?" And and all Trump is doing is basically again. This is something you have to see to listen to. It is pretty. <laughs> it's it's. If you've ever watched Trump interviewed, if you watch the Chris Wallace interview or you watch this one, there is there is this level of smugness that Trump has when he thinks that he has this answer that is just going to dig him out of the hole. But like watching Jonathan him read Swan, it is like he's like, well, here it is right here where <laughs> we're lower than first word he could read that's easy world. We're lower than the world. <laughs> It's a big world. Here's case death. First thing you're supposed to do. Oh, you're doing death. death. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so bad. First thing you're supposed to do when you hand the president a graph, make sure he knows how to read it first before you get it. <laughs> Again, I, he's he's got people in the room that there's no reason why somebody couldn't have stopped the interview and said, Mr. President, we we think it's probably a good idea if uh, perhaps <laughs> we, perhaps if if we just if we just if we just take those away from you. <laughs> it's crazy like like i made why, these in ms paint they're fantastic anyone should have just reached in and stopped it like in in and, and you know and and i understand from from the trump supporter side what they're going to say is that this was this was the president trying to be as open as possible with everyone so that so they could see it so that they that we could all see the president's trying to give us all the facts but everything he's reading everything he's talking about is nothing but bullshit 
So it doesn't. It's, it, it's, it, it's manipulated information, or it's leaving out statistics. It is it's leaving out it's, variables. It's just so ridiculous. All right, here you go. Right here. Here's case death. Oh, you're doing death as a proportion of cases. I'm talking about death as a proportion of population. Smuggler. That's where the US is really bad. Well, well, Much worse than South Korea, Germany, etc. You can't. You can't do that. You have Why to go. Do you have to go by. <laughs> you have to go by where. Look, here is the United States. You have to go by the cases. The cases. Why not as a proportion when of population? When we have somebody, what it says is when you have somebody that yeah. has it, where there's a case. Oh, okay. The people that live sure. from oh. those cases. It's surely a relevant statistic to say if the U.S. has X population and X percentage of death of that population no, versus South Korea. No, because you have to go by the cases. Well, look at South Korea, yeah. for example. Fifty-one million population, three hundred deaths. Okay, this this is a very telling part of the interview, or or, or from that question, where. Trump recognizes part way into it that he has to hold himself in check when it comes to, to talking about any other country in Asia. It's like, it's you, crazy. You don't know that. I do. It's you on don't the, know it's, that. Don't, you think they're faking their statistics? Uh, South Korea? I, I won't get into country? that because they have a very good relationship yeah. with the country. But right you there. You don't know that. And they have spikes. Look, here's Germany, one. Germany, low, here's 9, one, Here's one right here. United States. You take anyway. the number of cases. Okay. Now look, we're last, meaning we're first. Last? I don't know. <laughs> you we're first, last? In all, in all of, in all of yeah, and, yeah, if you ain't first, you're last. In if all last, of, you're first. If in all of your sports that you've ever played, baseball or or soccer or basketball or whatever sports, has it ever occurred to you the potential that being last was just as good as being first? Oh, I guess maybe nowadays. Because everybody well, gets a trophy. When, when everybody, yeah, everybody gets a trophy now, so it's the same. Well, so, to cut <laughs> cut him a break, he 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 is talking about the graph they showed. We were in last last place, the, we bottom, the bottom of it. Yeah, we were <laughs> so at the bottom. He, he just decided to call it. We're last. Like <laughs> you, have, you mean we have the lowest? Is what you're trying to say? Yeah, you're wrong what there. Is that? But even calling we're, it last is not right. Yeah, so <laughs> just just. A continuation of the uncomfortableness. Yeah, we're the first in, as a Take a look okay. again. It's cases. Just, okay. Um, and we have cases because I mean, of logistics. The way a thousand Americans are dying a day. But I understand. I understand on cases it's different. No, but you're not reporting it correctly, Jonathan. I think I am. But if you here's the other thing. If you did not know this, Trump is not only president of the United States, a casino or former casino open, owner, uh, as well as a hotel mogul. Uh, he is also a professional journalist because he knows exactly uh, what you have to do or how you uh, to report things. So ooh, if you did ooh. not know that, that's that's why we are in where in the position we are with him because he is a professional journalist. When he's done being president, I really hope like Fox hires him or One America because they'll hire anybody too. Um, <laughs> but have him go out in the field and be like, "Here's how you do real news reporting." Donald Trump, live on the scene of the murder. I can tell you who did it. Obama, he was here. It's his oh. fault. Like Fox News would be so mad if there was Donald Trump TV. <laughs> so it would again, be no Fox News. <laughs> I, we've 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 talked about. I've talked about that at least. I fully believe that the whole reason that President Trump ran for president was one to lose and two to open a news channel, a conservative news channel that would rival mm. Fox News. And when he won the presidency, because he was going to do it with, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, 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 Ayers uh, from Fox News, the guy that got fired for for fingering, oh, yeah, yeah. well, doing what he did with, with some of the <laughs> women. Um, the, the sexual harassment stuff. Sorry. Sorry. Look. <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, the president can say it, then you can say it, right? It makes it. Yeah, makes right. it okay. <laughs> Let's just say Roger Roger Ailes did what he did. Okay, uh, he's dead. It doesn't matter. I'm. I'm. I can't imagine there's anyone out there that is that is mourning Roger Ailes' loss more than Donald Trump. Okay, regardless. <laughs> um. So, but yeah, I I fully believe that the whole idea was is that Trump was going to open his own. Trump and Ailes were going to open their own news network that was going to rival Fox News because. If anything, there needs to be one more channel out there that's spitting Republican side of things, as well as making sure we all know where we can get our catheters. 
Oh, yeah. And uh, what does the guy from One America News say? Even when I'm wrong, I'm right. That right. is his yeah. literal sign. Yeah. Even when yeah. I'm wrong, I'm right. It's And that's who I, Trump I, always picks to like have asking questions. Oh, the yeah. network that has that guy as an anchor. And I cannot remember his name because my brain doesn't want me to. And it it it's it's, it's somewhere it's somewhere down here in the deep recesses right, where <laughs> you, it, right it's medulla take... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, uh, medulla oh so it continued no but you're not reporting it correctly jonathan i think i am but if you take a look at this other chart okay. look this is our testing i believe this is the testing yeah yeah we do more tests oh, wait a minute well, don't we get credit for that? And because we do more tests, we have more cases. In other words, we test more. We have now. Take a look. The top one. That's a good thing, not a bad thing. The top, Jonathan. If if if, if hospital rates were going down and deaths were going down, I would say terrific. You deserve to be praised for well, testing. They but they're all going. Well, they very rarely Hosp- talk. Sixty thousand Americans are in hospital. If you watch the news and dying or read the papers. They usually talk about new cases, new cases, new cases. I'm talking about death. Well, you look it's at going death. Up. Death is way down from where it was. It's it's a thousand death. a day. It was two and a half thousand. It went down to five hundred. Now it's going up death. again. Excuse me. Where it was is much higher than where it is right now. It went down and it's it went up like, again. But now it's going down again. It's, it's going, going down in Arizona. It's going down in Florida. National it's going down up. in Texas. Take a look at this. These are the tests. It's going down in Florida? He's right. It, it is actually, we are seeing a downward trend nationally. That's what Jonathan Swan was trying to give him credit for, was that we are seeing a downward trend nationally. But there are states that are still continuing to have basically explosive numbers every single day. Texas is out of control. California is seeing a spike now. It's 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 crazy. Yeah, it's going. It leveled mm-hmm. out and it's going down. Yeah, that's my report as of yesterday. Anyway, Mr. President, if I could change subject. It is going down in Arizona. It Arizona it is. Arizona it is. Texas it has big spiked, problems. And it is it, it spiked and it's now going down in Florida. It's evened out and going down in Florida. I'll have to see those. But but you have to look at this. This is the number of tests compared to the I don't the rest deny your world. figures. You've done more tests by far than the rest right. of the world. I don't and deny because that. Because we've done more tests, we have more cases. And he's right, because we do have more tests, do have more cases. But I, I think I want to just make sure everyone remembers that the president wants to stop most of the cases because they are not in his favor, because it looks bad. And, and he has admitted completely that it does make him look bad. So um, it's the, the interview went on from even there. It was it was. <laughs> I, 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 I'm tempted to play it. I, I want to, um, but again, I feel like it's eating up a lot of time, but it's, it's, it's so I'm going to move on to this one. It's been widely reported that the U S has intelligence indicating that Russia paid bounties <clears throat> or offered to pay bounties to Taliban fighters, to kill American yeah. soldiers. Mm-hmm. You had a phone call with Vladimir Putin on July 23rd. Bring up this issue. No, that was a phone call to discuss other things. And frankly, uh, that's an issue that, uh, many people said it was uh, fake news. Who said it was, it was fake false, news? I think a lot of people, uh, if you look at some of the wonderful folks from the Bush administration, uh, some of them, not any friends of mine, were saying that it's a fake issue. But a lot of people said it's a fake issue. There was dispute well, we had a call, intelligence. We had a call talking about nuclear proliferation, which right. is a very big subject, where they would like to do something, and so would I. We discussed numerous things we did not discuss that. No. And you've never- Ladies and gentlemen, that is called a pivot. He yeah. went from talking about Russians and intelligence indicating that the Russian government was paying bounties to the Taliban to, uh, to, to kill American soldiers, and he pivoted to nuclear uh, proliferation. Well, he built a straw man, right? That's, called a, that's, yes. a, that's a logical fallacy. It's a straw man argument. Here, right. Topic A is over here. You say nuclear pro- proliferation. We weren't talking about that. Right. A and B aren't aren't adding up here. That's a straw man. That's that's you know, that's fallacy one oh one. It's one of the easiest right. ones. And having to talk to your president while he walks himself into one. It's unbelievable. It's crazy. It is it is insane that he at this point in time he is still getting away with this. It it to me, you know. Again, I'm not saying he's getting away with it with everyone, 
he is though getting away with it with with those individuals that that will vote for him i mean they they don't they don't look at the evidence they only hear what he says and i'm not saying that everyone is this way i certainly don't want anyone to think that i think that people are stupid or that people aren't intelligent enough to to recognize what's going on but i i gotta be honest i i feel like i know plenty of people that will listen to this interview and and only pick out what the president says and not the rebuttals they will they will listen to something like this and they'll say well, yeah, but he defended it. He know he's he's got he's got he's the president of the United States. You don't think that they give him all of the information that he needs to know? Mm, yes, I do think that they give him everything he needs to know. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, I think he picks and chooses which information he wants to make relevant to him. And you, and you better believe that when he first got in there, he might have been given the correct information, and he probably kicked and screamed like a petulant child. And then now they just slide him over biased information, whether it's going to show, like we said, information that is correct, but you're not accounting for variable A, B, C, one, two, three. It's going to be anything that points to what his agenda needs it to. Exactly. Um, The, it, it's, it, it feels, you know, I, I have to sit here and I have to say, okay, when I try to make sort of an assessment or if I sit here and I listen to this, I try and formulate whether or not we had anything similar to what president Obama went through. Was there, was there anything like this where he sat down with an interviewer that asked questions, allowed him to make answers, and then rebutted him with facts. I, I cannot think of any interviews. And I'm not saying that just because I supported President Obama. I'm saying that purely because I cannot think of a single interview that went off the rails like this, that never, felt as never. comfortable as this. When no, because ready. when you used to... Obama was too ready. He was too ready. Oh, absolutely. He I mean, and when... He knows what he knows, even if he doesn't know what you're going to ask. And most of the time, most presidents don't know what they're going to ask. Um, unless, you know, I mean, I know stars have that say so. Like, I can only ask me about certain things. But right. when you're the free press, everything is open. Yeah. Like, right. So. And Obama always had that, you know, if someone came to him with a curveball, he'd be like, that's a good question. And uh, I'll get an answer for it. Like he wouldn't yeah, sit exactly. there and be like, "Nope, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong." <laughs> like I'm right here. He didn't have to bring it. He'd be like, "Yeah, that's not a good thing. This is not going the way we wanted it to." Yeah, and, uh, and I feel like even even with like Fox News constantly trying to make an argument of everything with President Obama, or you know, even President Bush, because towards the end, even even Fox News had had tried to abandon Bush when it looked like he was becoming slightly more moderate. Um, Mm. you know, he, it, it, I can't, I can't think of any times where it it went off the rails like this, where it became as uncomfortable as, as this, you know, it just, it, it, to me, it just strikes of the fact that this president is not inept enough for this job. And, and if he was at one point, I don't know. I think we felt that way with with uh bush uh, uh, you know especially when he flies onto the aircraft carrier and he's like yeah, mission complete <laughs> yeah like well i'm not gonna say that wasn't i'm not gonna say that wasn't a, a, a horrible mistake it, it absolutely was but i still feel like president bush conducted himself like a statesman maybe maybe yeah. and maybe that his history is is falling off and and in my head i'm, I'm not remembering everything exactly the way it went but I, history, I, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 no. Go ahead. I want to hear you. I want to hear you. I, oh I, no, I was you. just gonna say. I, I just, I, you know, I. But I can't think of. I, I can't think of anything that in my head where I look back and I go, well, President Bush was incredibly unprofessional in that in that interview, or that that when he stood in front of the press corps that he was incredibly. Uh, I'm not going to say that I, I, it didn't happen. I'm just saying, I can't remember it. And, 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 and honestly, I'll do a search. I, I honestly, after the show this week, before next week's show, I will go through and try and find any articles or any, you know, 
videos or interviews where where President Bush or President Obama or even President Clinton or Carter or Reagan or, or Bush, uh, you know, W, any of them were were unprofessional like this, un unstatesman, unpresidential like. I, I will I will go through and try and find it, and and if I find it, I definitely will present it and be like, look, here it is. This is where I was wrong. I I I can be wrong. We can all yeah. be wrong. Yeah, I, yeah, I get it. This, you know, a lot of what I th that we do on this show is 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 going to be opinion based, but it's opinion based on what we're being given and, and our reaction to it. This is this is what we do. But like I, it's 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 so difficult to sit and listen to an interview or watch an interview like this and and not get an opinion that is that is that makes me feel uncomfortable about him being the president still we're three and a half years into this. And it's just like, I just, I, I feel like there's, there should be a laugh track playing all the time. There should be a laugh track playing behind us. Anytime the president speaks, we should, we should hear some like murmuring of laughter every single time. Like, like it's all ironic. Movie, toys? Remember that movie toys with uh, Robin Williams. Uh, Yes, whenever he died and he had, he put that laughing machine. Yes, and, and it's, that's what should be. That's like a great pull, Trent. <laughs> that was that was. That's where that Joan Cusack's in that one. Joan Cusack. Yeah, yeah man. Right? Yeah, that's a great yeah. movie. I think oh, Ellen Cusack goodness. was in that. <laughs> oh, oh, that was oh, a good but movie. My question, my question is: Do you think President Trump would have got elected if he didn't have? Like okay, let's say ten years ago, or do you think he would got elected with the things he's doing if he didn't have social media? Like no, uh, no. I I, don't I mean think, I think it's the reason he won't get reelected. I think like I think media is the reason is the reason why he won't get reelected. Right. So I whenever that's the one whenever, thing that's pushing everybody towards him. No, I, I look, think you can go on your phone, Facebook, you like right now, every, everybody has this option. And I know a lot of people don't know this option, but you can go on your phone and Facebook and you'll check your settings and it'll probably have you, you probably didn't pick this, but it'll have you either Democrat or Republican, like it'll, or conservative or liberal. Like, I don't know how they put it in Facebook, but literally they, Facebook picked it for me. So I was seeing a whole bunch of Democratic liberal stuff on my Facebook line, and once I found out about this, I turned it off and just put myself as non, neither one. Tell me why I'm seeing ads for Trump now, and I'm seeing you get what I'm saying. So, oh really? Free program on social media for you to do that. Oh, for sure. I think I think though when when it was election time, he didn't have any political experience, right? He he's yeah. coming off of a, a show that got canceled, right? The uh, Apprentice. Princess. Yeah. And he can go out there and he was making promises left, right, and center and rallying the base and, and sitting there and hooting and hollering and doing whatever he wants because he hasn't had to prove it yet, right? He can go right. and be like, I'm a businessman. Let a businessman make America great. I can do this. And people are like, sure. You, there's people I know that you can you can go uh, that that voted for Trump for that and are now within six months to a year of him being president, going like, "Holy shit, what did I just do?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it, I think it's different now. I, his policies don't work. He surely can't contain a virus, an, an epidemic. Right. It's crashing now. He argues with people. He lies to get where he was. Somehow he, you know, he fill he fills the seats with his men. He's he's putting lifetime appointee uh, uh, for the Supreme Court, which is going to haunt us for a while down the road. Right. I mean, he's, yeah. he's he set the chess table up to checkmate everybody. Yeah. Within his time here, so if. Say so. Say he does get in the social media kick, and that it, that gets him reelected. Then I, we're still in a we're going to be in a world of of something's going to happen if he gets reelected. Yeah. What like he will he will trip up, mess up big time to a point where everybody will be on the same page. I fully believe that, but I also don't think that he's going to get it unless Kanye starts, you know, keep doing what he's doing.
I didn't, you know what? And what's funny is like, I didn't see it until this afternoon after I had put everything together for the show tonight. But um, did you all see uh, what was reported that uh, apparently Kanye West admitted uh, during an interview that he did or he his intentions on running for president are basically to sideline Joe Biden. The attempt is basically to pull votes away from Joe Biden. Uh, and he he potentially indicated that he may be working with some of the Republican uh, uh, Republican National Committee people in order to to do that. Apparently, he is uh, going to be on the ballot in maybe nine states now, including Ohio, uh, which I don't I, I, I guess I'll be honest. I don't I don't know. I don't know um, exactly what sort of what, what that how that benefits the president in Ohio, because Ohio is already um, slated to, to go to Trump anyway. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter how many, how many votes loses in Ohio, because honestly, if, if, if you win the state, you win the state, you get the electoral votes from the state. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. You know, there's no, there's no level of, of, of whatever. Um, I will say this, and 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 this week this guy became more popular. Um, and I, I unfortunately one of the things I did not do was write down his name, but there is there is this gentleman um, who has correctly predicted every single presidential race since 1984. I've seen it. I've seen it. Uh, um, I think his name is Lichcomb. Lichcomb. Yeah, he's, yeah. It's called the uh, it's it's the keys to the White House. Um, no. And uh, I think what we'll do is we'll probably go ahead and take a break real quick. And then when we come back, uh, we'll, we'll get into that. We'll leave, we'll leave Jonathan Swan and, uh, and his, uh, his whole interview. Uh, I, I will, I'll put that on the website. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll add a link to be able to pull up that interview uh, from Axiom. It's, it is incredible to watch. And, and honestly, I wish everyone would watch it because I really believe they would probably get something out of it. Um, yeah one way or the other to be honest so, and, all right and we'll get to some Bye. of these facebook uh questions that we have as well awesome awesome we'll do that all right we'll be right back after the break as long as i hit the button right and then everything comes up because if that works then it, it it all flows like it's supposed to uh and of course now i'm just filling talking because it hasn't started yet and i don't know why it hasn't started yet it's just kind of sitting it's just kind of sitting. So we'll, uh, <laughs> I don't know what it's going to take. I don't even know if it's going to play now. All right. Well, we'll, I tell you what, we'll do this. We'll play some music. We'll do commercials and, uh, and then we will come back, uh, right after the break. So stick around. Thanks for listening. In America, there is the story of Jamie Harrison, faith, family, and service. Those are Jamie's guiding values and we need them now more than ever. Jamie Harrison for Senate for South Carolina. This All About Nothing episode is paid for in part by MGM's I Read From Right to Left. Coming to a theater this time next non-pandemic time period, Tom Cruise and Steven Seagal bring you an action-packed adventure full of thrilling scenes, hard hits, long falls, and drama that already has the Academy buzzing about a potential of being mentioned in the same sentence as Oscar. Tom Cruise stars in this story of a veteran teacher hiding his dyslexia with a no-holds-barred form of teaching, hiding his own learning disability for 25 years. Steven Seagal is a friendly, loving, new principal working to earn the trust of his protective, secret-laden teacher. But when their school falls under the siege of a left-wing anarchist with a mission to take the children's education and pride, Cruz and Seagal team up to free their elementary school from the grip of these oppressors. Tom Cruise, Steven Seagal, and what can only be described as the roles of a lifetime in that at least one of them really needed right now. I read from right to left, directed by the ghost of Aaron Burr and the Jonas Brothers. I read from right to left, coming this undetermined. Joe Biden was taught that if you see injustice, you've got to stand up and act. It's why at age 26, Joe Biden became a public defender, why he ran for county council and combated housing discrimination, and why as U.S. Senator, Joe Biden led on voting rights. In 2008, Barack Obama chose him, and for eight years, Joe Biden served by the president's side helping to lead us out of the last economic crisis and stop Ebola from becoming a global pandemic. But now in this crisis, Donald Trump has failed the ultimate test of leadership, especially failing communities of color who have been hit hardest by this virus. To heal this nation, 
It will take a president who has always stood up to injustice. Someone who sees going to take them head on. Joe Biden, let's build this country back better. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. All right. I'm going to go ahead and come on back. I want to thank everybody for joining us. Make sure that uh, whatever platform you're listening to us on, uh, you subscribe, rate, and review. I am Barrett Gruber, along with Zach King and Trent Clark here, the All About Nothing podcast. So uh, when, before we I jumped off pretty abruptly, sorry. <laughs> before uh, before we, um, we, 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 I guess we jumped out of the show, we did mention that uh, um, we were going to talk about some things. Um, earlier this week, uh, which Trent doesn't know, and Zach only sort of got a hint. Um, there was a topic brought up that uh, that I that I I said that I was going to bring up on the show, and then I potentially said that I was not going to bring it up the show. And let me just ask you guys: in your opinion, when does a decade start? Does it start on the zero, or does it start on the one? Two thousand. Let's say two thousand eleven is two thousand is is the year two thousand part of the nineties, or is the year two thousand part of part of the next decade let's say 2010 is 2010 part of the the aughts or is it part of the 20 teens well, 2000 itself was a decade years. it's 10 yeah, years yeah. well yeah, a decade is defined as 10 years but when does a decade start i don't, I don't think it has oh to be. 2001 has to be the start of a decade that's my opinion that's my opinion 2001 is the start of a decade yeah so I'm not with the 17 percent because yeah, I. That's <laughs> that's exactly I, I, what that's it is. That's a tricky question, though. But you're asking that's exactly another. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, because you're yeah. asking, you're adding another year technically. Yeah. So so, so 90, 2020 is not part of your decade. Right. That is that is that is how I have always viewed it. Is that 1991 through 2000 was the 90s. Uh, I, and I get it that only Trent once again you're part of a minority group um okay. <laughs> 17 again, again. only <laughs> only only seven only 17 percent of us actually believe that the uh the decade starts on the one rather than the decade starting on the aughts on the zeros so uh yeah that was I was just curious as to what what y'all's opinion was on that I I again I think 1991 through 2000 is the 90s 1981 through because you know reagan was elected at the beginning of the 80s 1981 so you, 1990 gave you that like that time of like you throw your parachute pants away because the 90s are coming <laughs> it was an adjustment this, yeah. <laughs> yeah so your odd years are the uh your adjustment years all right yeah. well that's now that my brain officially hurts uh, yeah thank you for that. yeah exactly Exactly. Okay. So, uh, and, and I didn't look this up while we were (laughs) were on break, but I can't remember, I cannot remember what this guy's name is. And, and unfortunately I'll have to give him credit at some other point. Uh, you'll, maybe you'll see it in the credits or something like that. Um, but he has predicted that Biden will beat Trump. Uh, and he has predicted the correct presidential election, uh, ever since 1984. And he has 13 keys to which, uh, a, a, president can win or a candidate will win the presidency the first key is party mandate after the midterm elections the incumbent party holds more seats in the house than it did after the previous midterm election in this case uh so true if if it's a true statement then it's a point awarded to trump if it's a false statement then it is a point awarded to biden so um Essentially, in that one, the, the answer is false. Republicans lost the U.S. House in the midterms of 2018. Uh, the next key is contest. And, and since there is no serious contest for the incumbent party nomination, which means there are no Republicans running against Trump, um, no Republican challenged Trump, therefore that statement is uh, true. So that's a point going towards Trump. Uh, incumbency is the sitting president running for reelection. True. President Trump is not looking to step down at any point um the next one fourth is the third party 
is there a third party or a major third party candidate challenging the Trump and Biden? Uh, in this case, uh, it's true, despite claims that Kanye West uh, to be running, this is a two party race. So uh, there is no, I read that the wrong way. I apologize. There is no third party, uh, no major third party challenger. That answer is true. Therefore, uh, this goes to President Trump as well. So great right now. Uh, short term economy. Economy is doing pretty crappy in the short term, right? Pandemic has pretty much just killed us. Uh, so uh, that Not is a to false mention that, uh, that uh, what was it? 4% of the economy will expand, what, 4% a year under Donald right. Trump? That, that was that one of his what, promises that, he didn't keep. That is what he said. Um, um, so, yeah, so short term economy is doing pretty bad. Uh, Long term economy. Uh, the real annual per capita economic growth during the terms equal or exceeding uh, the mean growth during that's a lot of words that a lot of people probably listening don't understand. Anyway, the answer it to that is long -term, yeah, the long term <laughs> economy is also doing poorly right now. Thanks to uh, the pandemic, our GDP is down 30 percent currently. Uh, so that growth in 2020 is way down. Uh, long term economy looks bad. Therefore, that is a false. That one goes towards Biden. Uh, policy change. Has the incumbent president caused any major changes in national policy? This is going to be a true. Um, we have seen uh, through his tax cuts, but mostly through his executive orders, Trump has fundamentally changed the policies of the Obama era. Uh, is there any social unrest? If, uh, if there is no social unrest, then you have to, uh, during the campaign, uh, that is, you have to, uh, you have to give Trump a point on that one but we and have seen of, social uh, unrest thinking of trump, um, you said tax cuts so this is another promise that he made trump promises to lower corporate taxes rate and huge tax cuts for working americans before right. he was in office right now does anyone one of those promises <laughs> was made does... well let's, let's let's let the people guess which one of those yeah, that was made. that was the, that was a corporate tax cut, I believe that uh, that went yeah. toward uh, the corporate. Jeff Bezos. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when, you pay when, no taxes, sir. As soon as that tax cut bill went into place, everyone got pissed at their tax returns that next year. Like, hey, yeah, what do you mean yeah. I owe? <laughs> yeah, one did, the, working well, great for you, huh? And one of the things <laughs> that one of the things that happened with that tax cut. Uh, was the reorganizing of a lot of the tax brackets. Um, unfortunately for me, it moved me from being at the top of a tax bracket to the bottom of a tax bracket. And the people at the bottom of tax brackets are the ones that wind up paying the most into uh, those uh, in, in, in those tax brackets. So unfortunately, it did move me. I'm, I'm sure that there are some people that it, it did, they did see, you know, they they're paying less in taxes than they were before, but I am not one of them. And, uh, right. therefore F you. Um, <laughs> so let's see social unrest. We're going to have to mark that was a false because there is a lot of social unrest. Currently you have the black lives matter. Um, before that, uh, it, what his, in his first hundred days was Charlottesville. I mean, the, it's yeah. almost been social unrest shoot the day after his inauguration, you had the women's march across the country, more than 5 million women across the country, and men, men included as well. But it was, it was designated as the, 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 the women's march by the, the pink hats they all wore as well, um, which, you know, Girl. huge. But that was the day after his, elect, his inauguration. Therefore, you have, to, you have to recognize from almost day two of his presidency, there has been social unrest. Um, has the incumbent administration uh, been entangled in any major scandals? Any, any you guys can think of? Um, Jeffrey Epstein. Oh, let's see. <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, having Russia come and get you uh, your election, influence your election, I don't, uh, porn Ukraine, stars out the you, ass. Yeah, porn uh, stars. The Ukraine. Uh, you, let's you've literally see. had almost every single person involved in your campaign uh, either pleaded guilty or been found guilty of lying there to the FBI or lying to Congress. Um, we have, we have several, we have several of his uh, campaign people 
from the 2016 election, those they're still in jail. Roger Stone, of course, is out, but whatever. Oh, yeah, I was about so, to say, Roger Stone got out. Yeah. Cohen was in, got out, and then had to go back, and then got back out. Yeah, he's back out. Yeah, he's back out. <laughs> there was a judge that deemed that it was kind of unfair for him to have been put back in. Just, I mean, like, and and, and what's weird about that story is that, like, he was he was freed, not freed. He was put on house arrest. And then he went out to have a lunch with someone uh, because they were discussing the book deal that's coming. So so Cohen's book is in the process of being written uh, and, and he was meeting with the publishers is what it sounds like. Uh, so it, regardless, it, it it's entertaining. Um, so let's like see, scan. Yeah, foreign. Uh, the next one, the next key is uh, foreign or military failures. Have there been any foreign or military failures during President Another Trump's? promise. Another promise he made. Well, bring yeah. Bring the troops home. Yeah, and he, he did. Bring he did. Home. But we haven't, in his presidency, we haven't really seen any major, like, failures as far as, as, no. far as military goes. Um, I mean, the so whole shooting play. down of the drone thing and then arguing over who shot it down. And, but we and didn't... Then, we, the killing of the um iranian general yeah that one yeah. but i mean that's just that i think that's kind of run of the mill it's except it's, that's pretty minor except yeah, for the pretty... missile they used is a ginsu seven like seven or nine bladed ginsu missile that just shoots swords out and lands on you and you're in peace really which Oy. is not to say that guy didn't deserve it so i'm sure. not gonna crap on trump when it comes to that so um, but you can't say that he's had any military failures, but at the same time, we can't say that he's had any military successes. We haven't pulled out of Afghanistan or Iraq. We're still there. Um, so, so that is also going to be a, that is a, that is a false. Therefore, uh, that one gets awarded to Biden. Uh, the next well, as one. As long as there's oil there, then we will never yeah. leave. I'm that's the whole, there. that's, that was the Bush problem. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Until the oil the dries up, <laughs> that's yeah. when they'll leave. <laughs> we gotta go get some golf so jack. Uh, yeah, exactly. So the next one is incumbent charisma. Is the incumbent party candidate charismatic? Is he charismatic? Charismatic. charismatic. Is he charismatic? Yeah, I would say that Trump <laughs> yeah. is fairly charismatic, but he, yeah, he's he's really only charismatic though to his base, and that's that's exactly. what this guy decided as well is that he's really only charismatic to his base. It's a very narrow group of Americans. Therefore that is going to have to be a false uh, is the challenger charismatic. Do you all find Joe Biden to be charismatic? He hasn't came out in the woodworks yet. So yeah. no. oh, you, I guess you we think gotta he's wait until he start debating. No, I think Joe's it, funny, man. When he was VP and like, okay, I, the sniffy stuff is weird. We've, we've, we've definitely, We'll come out on front street and say that, but I don't know how you can say Trump is charismatic. He's not. You would have to literally know nothing about him and meet him and have him talk to you and maybe be like, "Oh," but you'd probably walk away like, "What a prick!" Like this guy really thinks a lot of himself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I can't I can't really I can't really um I can't really say that that he's. He's all that charismatic, though. I, 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 I feel like with Biden, he's just sort of, uh, and and part of my issue is is that you know I was I was a Bernie I wasn't a Bernie bro, but I was a Bernie supporter, and Bernie is Bernie charismatic. Bernie, Bernie, Bernie is. A, you think do you think Ber you think Bernie's charismatic? I do. I think I do. Justin but, Trudeau yeah. is someone that you would call charismatic. That is inviting and. Bernie, Bernie going like, uh, bro, bro, I mean, Bernie. his ideas were, but Bernie, yeah, you know, they're like, oh, why don't you about. wait a minute and let me tell you this? Like, I, I don't know. Like, I, I like Bernie. I love Bernie, Bernie but I, I don't think he's like inviting. Like, I, I don't know. He kind of smells like Bob he's Bob like that, he's like that granddad that knows that knows what he's talking about, but he just I doesn't don't. know how to express it. So he's like, hey, you're supposed to be listening to me. Barack Obama, charismatic. I think when he speaks and talks, he's inviting. That when you talk to him, mm. you you would feel like, oh, he's looking me in the eye. He's actually talking to me and listening to yeah. me. That, I, you know, I, that I, kind I, of I thing. Could, I can see that. I, I think I, I just. I, I, 
Well, I think uh, McCain. I think he was charismatic when when he when when it came to him okay. speaking at times and stuff like that. I don't know. Maybe defini- definitionally, it's we have and, and potentially different. potentially that's that's where that's that's where we're we're having a difference of opinion is on what charismatic is. I I sure. I don't find Joe Biden to be charismatic. He's there's nothing exciting mm. about Joe Biden. There isn't anything I think that the the there and, and honestly, it's like Trump's the excitement people get over Trump is polarizing. in the wrong direction. Yeah, it's extremely polarizing. Um, Entertainment. So, but the fact yeah. that's, that's that's what it comes down to. When he knows how to entertain people. He knows yeah. what will get you know get his supporters all riled up. He's like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about, Trump. You talk to them like that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, the uh, the 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 fact that uh, that um, well, based on based on basically those numbers and and basically just singling down to true and false statements, uh, they were able to derive, or or this professor was able to derive uh, that uh, his name's Alan Lich Lichtman, uh, but uh, able to derive that Biden will win the presidential election this year, and we will see Trump. Uh, out of office um, this is the only- sorry Go ahead. this is too funny not to share <laughs> tn has said joe biden is only charismatic when children touch his leg hair oh <laughs> i don't even know what to say to that oh that's <laughs> that's uncomfortable that is, <laughs> that is- <laughs> They're not holding right. back today, boy. Good God. Regardless, <laughs> regardless of that. Hey, did did uh, uh, uh here's here's uh okay. I don't I don't know how to move on from that. Um did you all, I, okay. Let me figure out how to segue into that. Uh speaking of veterans, um <laughs> so yesterday during the uh the president's news conference, uh from his resort in Bedford, uh, uh New Jersey at his golf resort. Mm-hmm. Um, he signed several executive orders, um, a couple, uh, four executive orders, uh, actually, he, he, and then one bill he signed. So uh, first of all, the, the four executive orders he signed um, have differing, there's differing opinions on exactly what was accomplished by these uh, executive orders. But um, the first one was a deferment of student loan debt. So uh, he is continuing to push with an executive order, push the deferment of the student loan debt out further. I believe that for some people, it was going to begin back in September. It, they would have to start September. paying student loans in September. Um, that apparently with this executive order, he's pushing forward. And, and in a minute, we'll, we'll actually discuss whether or not any of this is even valid whatsoever. Um, he also signed an executive order for a payroll tax holiday, making anyone making less than a hundred thousand um, would would be subject to a payroll tax holiday. There is there's nothing in this that indicates whether or not uh, Americans will have to pay it back at some point because it's taxes and legally we have to pay taxes. I don't know how you defer taxes out. I guess it's a deferment. I don't know. But, but, so holiday, is, so is it like multiple days or just be like one weekend, like tax-free weekend that we don't get charged? Not tax, 100%. How does this gonna work? The <laughs> whole thing is extremely convoluted. There isn't really a whole lot of details. The only thing that we really know for sure is apparently it's going back to August 1st of 2020 uh, and it will go through December. So from August till December, apparently there will be a a tax holiday of a, a payroll tax holiday. So not again, not exactly certain as to how that is going to work at all. We get a day um, off. Well, if, it comes down to it, oh, <laughs> if it comes down to it and I see, yeah, it, I mean, my checks don't have no federal, no state coming out of it. You think it's only going to be federal, it, Medicare, be federal, right? I don't know. I don't know. All but that see, I have to leave. That's crazy. I don't believe it. So you're going to get one big paycheck. You're just going to give us a break, but then you're going to come back and be like, but. But but it's not one big paycheck. If it's going to be from, like like you're saying, if it's going to be from a certain amount, I think it's supposed to be from August until December that we we don't get. That's what it's sounding like. And that's that's essentially 
that's essentially the executive order that he signed. Again, there's there's no backing to this. The president has no no power over the purse strings that Congress has set. Like like all money is through Congress. Any yeah. any decisions like this have to be done through Congress. So it doesn't. It, I don't. I am not a hundred percent certain as to what exact, except, except I do have, I do have a theory that essentially what he was trying to do was trying to make a play that made it look as though he was trying to do something that he was trying to make things look like they're good for Americans. The, the, the problem is, is um, it is, it's all for show. It doesn't, it doesn't change anything. Um, the one of the other ones is that he extended the moratorium on on evictions. So so people that that don't have the money to pay for their rent or their their mortgages, now there should be uh, there that he's extended that with an executive order. Again, this is this is something that he can't control. There's essential power to do that. The only president, the only power available to do that is that if Congress gives money to the banks to be able to support the banks without the people paying for the mortgages or, or that, that owners can then request money or, or get a loan, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. All of that has to come through Congress. There's nothing, there's nothing the president can do that where he can just hand out money. No. It's just not available. Um, but he'll, and then he'll the last, damn sure yeah. put his name on it. Oh, of when course. Did. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, and then, and then the last one was uh, where, you know, back in March, uh, April, they enhanced the um, the uh, unemployment benefits uh, to six hundred dollars. Well, um, in his executive order that he signed, apparently he has uh, enhanced it to four hundred dollars. So let's say you're in South Carolina and you get two hundred ninety dollars a week in unemployment. Well, there will be an additional four hundred dollars. The only caveat, however, is that um, three hundred dollars will be provided <clears throat> federally the states have to come up with the last 100 of that, okay? Um, $100 from the states. And most states right now are saying that they don't have any idea where that money's gonna come from. Um, that there are currently 45 states that are still requesting federal assistance on unemployment that is currently without enhancement. So just to pay for unemployment right now without the $600 enhancement or the $400 enhancement, the states currently right now, there are 45 of them that are asking uh, the federal government for assistance on that. So um, there was also a bill that he signed. And, 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 and what I'm going to read is um, this is the Veterans Access Choice and Accountability Act of 2014. The date is important there. 2014, Obama signed this into law, and it was only going to last for three years from 2014 till 2017, August specifically of 2017. Um, and it was a program that was uh, designed uh, to basically give veterans if there is a if they if they have to wait longer than 30 days to see a VA doctor or a VA physician or some something related to their VA benefits, if they have to wait longer than 30 days, then they can go outside the, the VA to get whatever it is they need done in order to, and, and then it still be covered under the VA. So they could still file that claim with the VA. That was essentially what it was. President Obama signed it in to law in 2014. The law, which allowed eligible veterans to be covered by the government for care provided by doctors outside of the VA system, was a bipartisan uh, initiative spearheaded by two senators. Trump had repeatedly criticized Bernie Sanders as well as John McCain. So both Bernie Sanders for this one. Um, what Trump signed was a 2018 law, uh, the VA Mission Act, that modified the expanded and eligible criteria uh, from the choice rather than just tout the bill. But Trump is now claiming that he created the VA Choice Act, uh, Accountability Act of 2014, and that what he signed yesterday basically now gives veterans the choice to go outside of the VA if they have to wait more than 30 days to see a doctor. This is bringing what do you a think? New meeting to cheating off somebody else's paper. He literally just <laughs> took the paper off somebody's desk and was like, I'm going to write my name on it. <laughs> Your answers you look real good. I'd like to get some of that. People are going to like that. It's exactly what he did. 
just it's it's absurd it's crazy. It's crazy. and like he stands up there and 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 you know i i'd like to think that there are plenty of people out there that wouldn't see it and just go oh that's such bullshit that was there in place before but i have a feeling that a good number of them probably don't they have no idea it's it is an interview it's, tonight. <laughs> You're like, well, he signed that bill for the VA, didn't he? That's one of well, the things he did. Well, then Fox no Fox News will just show uh, you know, videos of Obama wearing a tan suit and using a selfie stick so, to 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 go ahead and just negate the whole thing. Right. Yeah. So this is so this was the end of the news conference or the the press conference that he had at his uh, resort yesterday. When will this relief get in the hands of Americans that need it? What date? We think it's going to be very rapid. We want it to be very rapid. It's going to be distributed in a way that uh, whichever the fastest way, there are various methods and it will be rapidly distributed. Legal challenges with this, right? I didn't say that. No, no, I didn't say that. Yesterday, sir, you said you were expecting legal. I said, I what I said is people can do whatever they want. I guess maybe they'll bring legal actions. Maybe they won't, but they won't win. They won't. Legal action is brought against you on this. Why not just work with Congress on this deal? Well, I'm not saying they're not going to come back and negotiate. They might very well come back and negotiate. When they're going to see this release very when soon they're going to see it very soon look it's there it is right there excuse me excuse me there it is right there go ahead mr president though this is expected to be tied up in the court so this relief is either going to be delayed or blocked oh, I, don't think so. I think this is, is going this to go very rapidly theater? through the courts but this will go very if, if we get vote. sued maybe we won't get sued if we get sued it's somebody that doesn't want people to get money Okay, and that's not going to be a very popular thing. Go around Congress. Are you trying to set a new precedent that the president no, can go around no. Congress and decide how you much? You hear the word obstruction? Spend? They've yeah. obstructed. You're Congress has obstructed. The Democrats have obstructed people from getting desperately needed money. Go ahead, please, right here. No, no, why do you keep you saying finished? that you have veterans' please. choice? Please. Sir, you said that you have veterans' choice. It was passed in 2014. Okay. Excuse me. Go ahead, please. But it was a false statement, sir. Okay. Thank, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you very much. So, so just to, just <laughs> yeah, just to, just to point out exactly what happened there. Okay. So, so he they asked him about uh, the um, the relief packages that he just signed as an executive order. Uh, how quickly they were going to get there, and then he and then they asked about the potential of the fact that that it was delayed by some sue some suing or some lawsuits against his executive orders because let's be honest i i'd have to run the numbers to see but how many executive orders do you think that he's signed have have just gone straight in because no. i believe that many of them have had to then be i mean he he issued a muslim ban through an executive order that it took several rounds of appeals to get to the Supreme Court where they, yes, finally did say, oh, yeah, okay, we get it. It's not necessarily a religious thing, even though it was. It's not necessarily a race well, thing, except that it is. Well, don't, and don't come t talking to us and go, do you know what obstruction is, right? Yeah. Yeah, you know yeah. what it is too, bro, because you did yeah. it. Obstruction is literally the thing where you you tried to tell you 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 would stand there and you'd tweet from your toilet, telling you know basically like uh, just destroying through Twitter uh, whoever it was that was on the stand trying to uh, I mean you got you got people that worked in the White House that went to Congress to say yes the president was on this phone call with the president of Ukraine and you know and there and he's and then he fires them yeah it's it's insane. So, so then there's that. And then at the very end, what you heard was a, was a, a uh, professional journalist asking about how it is possible that, that he could try and take credit for the Veterans Access Choice and Accountability Act of 2014, that, that literally he stood up there and acted as though that no one had ever been able to do this before until he signed this bill into law, which, by the way, the, the president doesn't create laws. Congress creates laws, and then before they become laws, they have to be signed by a president. It, you know, the president can support bills that can become laws, or he cannot support them. He's not writing laws, but he can write executive orders. He can instruct the military, and and that's that's that is 
part of the the fear that I have with this particular president, even though we potentially only see another what six months of his well, presidency left. We need to give we need to give him some laser discs or uh, VHS of uh, Schoolhouse Rock. And let them see how bills are get get passed and stuff like that. A little edification. I like the singing constitution, Isabel. It's a bill. I like it. Good voice. <laughs> well, God. yeah. Hey, Zach, you said that we had some questions on Facebook. Yes, we did. We did. We did. We did. One I While saw Zach- was. While Zach is pulling that up, do you want me to? Uh, do y'all want the numbers on the COVID update for uh, for South Carolina and the nation? Let's I don't get everybody get in a bad mood today, Barrett. All right. Well, <laughs> Same thing we do every Sunday, Pinky. Yes. Try to depress the world. South Carolina <laughs> did cross did cross the hundred thousand confirmed cases uh, mark today. We are at one hundred thousand four hundred and thirty five positive. Uh, confirmed test cases, as well as we did cross the 2000 mark in the number of confirmed deaths for the state of South Carolina. United States is now above 165,000 as far as the number of deaths with 5.2 million confirmed positive cases. Uh, Georgia has 200, uh, more than 216,000 confirmed positive cases. And North Carolina is now more than 136 confirmed cases for, for the state of uh, North Carolina. So Sorry. Speaking of Georgia, did you uh, see that um, the kid, a kid got a girl got suspended for taking a picture? Yeah, for the people in the hallway. Yep, yeah, but and the immediately un unsuspended. Yeah. No, she. Well, it was pretty quick. Yeah, to be honest with you. But they said the they fact really that only broke one one school rule was putting kids on social media. But it was everything a kid else, they, kids on social media though. Exactly, but that's in the rules from what they say. But the same superintendent came out, the same superintendent came out and said that, you know, even though the hallway looked bad, there's no way of them making kids do something. When they will stop, when they will stop it, they will stop a teenage girl from wearing a spaghetti top. Right. Yes. Your parents are hanging down. Pick them up. You can't wear a mask? (laughs) We'll print. That's, we'll print the damn high school logo on those bad boys and hand them out. Figure it out. I don't care. That's that's un, in, un, unexcusable, man. That's crazy. That's crazy. I'll tell you, All right, sure, like, come on now. <laughs> we, we, <laughs> I don't know yeah. about. Oh, that's uh, what they should be doing. They're that's paying what my ass. They so. be doing. Yeah, you're teaching them a trait. They should learn how to make masks while they're in art. That makes. You're gonna learn to sew in home ec today. You're making masks for everybody. Yeah. All right. <laughs> The bit, the, the, I guess the big question, we've kind of answered that throughout the rest of this podcast, but so what has Donald Trump said that he was going to do and didn't do? Well, he said he was going to build the wall and he keeps and saying that he's built 230 something, 200, he's, he's, he keeps saying there's some 230 some odd miles of wall that's been built, but I think that from- It's like the, six from, miles. <laughs> yeah. It's and and I think I saw just within the last couple months there was a windstorm that actually tore a good chunk of it down. Um, so where there was a wall, which which by the way, where there where there is a wall that has been built by this Trump administration, um, it's actually set back from, or in some places set in front of the border wall that was already there. There hasn't been any new border wall built in any locations where there wasn't already a wall. There have been uh, taller walls put up in a relative vicinity of walls that already exist. Um, so, I, you know, so that was one. So he said that he was going to, uh, he was yeah, going to we can fly wall. through. I mean, uh, he said he was going to end Common Core math. Yeah, Common Core, Common core math was like, um, what else? He, said he will bring together a uh, he will bring together a divided nation. Yeah, that's what he said. Yeah, he did. He did say that, and he did uh, <laughs> make sure the one trillion dollar infrastructure plan will be revenue neutral. <laughs> okay, good luck. Um, I think nothing even also, comparing to that. Yeah. Uh, what else? He also told us that uh, that uh, well, let's see. Um, gosh, I'm. I am 
you know what probably probably problem is probably part of the problem is is the fact that i didn't really subscribe to a lot of his newsletters that he was writing uh <laughs> so i may well, have gotten <laughs> and he said he fully, fully all illegal ignorance Immigrants, excuse immigrants. Me. Yeah, true. true. Report all of them. Full, fully repeal and replace Obamacare. That's true too. He did say he was going to do that. So, how many of how many? Where are we at so far? How many has he actually done? Uh, about, uh, what has yeah, he done? Uh, maybe Let's see four. what he's done. He did. He did invoke an, a Muslim ban on on um, seven or seven or so different nations around the world that that now they can no longer enter the United States from. Well, he but, did. Change by the way. Uh, U.S. withdrawal from the Trans-Pacific Park Partnership. True. Uh, TPP. Now that's not. I. I. I have. I have some. Not the some, worst. Yeah, that one. That one. I have a tending. I tendency to 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 also kind of agree with. I. I think that we should have trading partners in the Pacific, but at the same time, I have issue with some of the trading partners that we were with in that. In and I and, and I'd have to go back and research, but there are some of them that use child labor and 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 things mm -hmm. like that we know are confirmed and yet that was still one of those things that obama was very proud of with the tpp even though there are definite flaws you know well nike um, still uses child labor so you know yeah well, well i mean <laughs> so the, that the should be for sure yeah, um, yeah Volkswagen um, as well he um, um he said he said he was gonna um, take the U.S. out of NAFTA, North American Free Trade Agreement, and basically they just need renegotiated the whole yeah, thing and call came it up something with else. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's like they put United States, Canada, and Mexico in the title of it. Essentially, is what what happened. There wasn't a whole lot of changes. Well, to and then they put this. They put this in the. Thing. They uh, put this in the kept column, but it's just what you talked about veterans having the ability to receive public department uh receive public department of veteran affairs treatment and attend private doctors yeah of their choice yeah except but, that was a that was an obama thing it obama, was already done yeah yeah and it and it ran out here's the thing it it out in august of 2017 it did not get reinitiated until the exact until the bill he signed yesterday so that's that's three years that it, it that that they went without, or or they had to find some other way of getting around it. But that that's three years. It took them three years to do something that they already all it would have really taken was an extension. Just anyway, go ahead. So Sorry. It, and then he he directed the treasury the treasury secretary to label China as a currency manipulator. <laughs> okay, and what does that do? I mean. That's a what, what's that's the, a non-starter. It's not a it, you know again that's not a that's not really a thing. I mean, what does it what does it do for the United States? What does it do for the people of the United States? I don't. Mm. Know. Above my pay grade, yeah, he's yes. started a tariff and, and based well he he painted him as an enemy and that's what he did. Yeah. I mean he he did tariffs and he did. He, all that and then the, the virus came and he pretty much in that interview tried to make it seem like it was an intentional thing Just right basically they sneezed oh, in he's always been thin 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 thin. yeah i mean ultimately labeling or, or you know uh his visa rules is the last one i can i can even care to talk about uh limiting how long people on visas can stay here <sighs> The I, I'll mention one more I just thought of, which was, was he did move the uh, United States, uh, the uh, U.S. embassy in Israel to Jerusalem, and that was something that he said he would do. Now and pissed did, a lot of people off. Yeah, oh, yeah, it also it also cost the United States a fair amount of money in in creating and building a brand new. Uh, I, I think it's still in the process of being built. I'd have to pull up an article on that, but I, I anyway what was the point of moving it from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem? Because it made a bunch of evangelicals very, very excited in their pants. So, um, uh, Seth Rogen kind of said it, said it the best. And he's, he's Jewish. And he goes, uh, when you're growing up as, as, a, as a Jewish person, they tell you all this, the stories from the old Testament about how it's sure. God's lane or whatever thing they don't tell you is, uh, there was people there already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When it was your chosen land. 
Palestine and them, they have reason, rights and reasons to be pissed off. Every single Absolutely. time Israeli, every time the Israelites came back into Israel, there was always someone there. Some, it, if you're pushing people off their land, they're not going to be happy about it. <laughs> Topic for another time, but yeah. absolutely. But uh, segueing Israel all the way up the road to uh, Lebanon, you saw the, uh, did you see the explosions from Beirut uh, this uh, last week? Did you see this? Uh, so apparently, and this is an, uh, so I'm just going to assume everyone has seen the video of the explosion. I'm going to assume that at this point, people probably know enough about what the details of it are. Um, this was the update from yesterday. Uh, right, apparently in Lebanon, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> it, uh, these are the details from yesterday. Uh, demonstrations have begun protest. Demonstrators have begun protesting all over <clears> Lebanon. <throat> Uh, demonstrating against the government and the political establishment. As of Saturday, 158 people have been reported dead. That's according to the health ministry. Uh, the injured now exceeds 6,000. 21 are still reported as being missing. Uh, Hassan. 6,000? Uh, yeah, 6,000 injured from that explosion. Um, Hassan could Nasarala. Been, that could be dead. Yeah. They could have been potentially. dead. Potentially. Like, easily. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, leader of Hezbollah, uh, the Shiite Islamist uh, political party and militant group based in Lebanon says that they had no weapons that were being stored uh, in the docks there where the explosion occurred. Now, the details on the explosion are basically this. Uh, the explosion was caused by 2,750 tons of ammonium nitrate. That is a lot of fertilizer um, used as fertilizer as well as a key ingredient to making bombs. It was also used in the uh, 1994 U.S. Oklahoma City bombing of the Murr Federal Building. Uh, in contrast, the bomb used in Oklahoma uh, by white supremacist group uh, had two and a half tons of ammonium nitrate and nearly leveled that building. Um, 168 lives were lost in Oklahoma uh, uh, at the Murr Federal Building bombing. So, um, so that was 2,000 Ton, two, uh, two tons of ammonium nitrate versus 2,700 tons that basically was one of the largest explosions. That, that, what, 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 what went off in Beirut was larger than the mother of all bombs, which is the, the you know, that's that giant bomb that we, we came up with uh, during Bush's presidency. Yeah. So that's that's pretty much the update on on the Beirut situation. I'm sure as as things progress, there are there are theories and and uh, you know uh, conspiracy me. <laughs> theories. Yeah, well, there's there's a lot of theories behind what the potential why there was 2,700 tons or 2,800 tons of, of yeah just happened to be left in a mo in 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 a in a dock. Uh, do they now use we that know. for? Do they use that for um for fireworks? Over no. there, do they? Oh, they don't. No. Okay. No, you don't use ammonium nitrate for fireworks. I did. I, you know, I just, I just had to ask. You know, that's going to be the smelliest firework you've ever. I mean, I get it. Fireworks <laughs> aren't smelling sulfur, but that is going to be one of the most disgusting fireworks. Um, I did. Uh, they, 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 they have uh, decided. They, they, they have done some of the work necessary to find this out. That the ammonium nitrate was originally shipped uh, on a. Russian cargo freighter uh, that did dock in Lebanon several years ago. The reason that it docked was because it actually had uh, some technical difficulties. It was docked. They did not get the technical, whatever happened to it, they could not get it fixed. Um, the crew abandoned the ship. The captain abandoned the ship. The owner abandoned the ship. It was left in, in, in Beirut. And then apparently at some point, all of the ammonium nitrate was pulled off. It was put into a cargo hold in uh, in a in a warehouse there at the dock, where it was stored for years. And then it sounds as though it was an accident. It does sound now. I've I've heard conspiracy theories that they think that they saw a missile fly in and and blow it up. But this is all you know conspiracy. I've seen plenty of videos that I didn't see anything flying into it. So it just doesn't. There was a there was a there was one explosion with the fire. And then the fire, I think, caused the ammonium nitrate to explode. That's it. It was an accident. I think I think it was a long planned out 
It was but, long but and planned why, on. But why would you attack Lebanon with a with a? I mean, like what what terrorists would attack Lebanon? Well, you got to think. They, I think they said Israelis that place had it, it also that place that blew up also was holding a whole bunch of rice. I think that they had. Really? Uh, See, if, I didn't. If that's I what didn't they trade. That. It, See, I didn't, it, it I didn't hear that. that it, it was something that they trade over there. Interesting. I'm not sure, it, it, but it's supposed to be like, like I guess their main crop that they trade for money. Okay. And okay. I'm guessing that was in there too. But I, I don't know. Extraordinary I, claim. I'm just, I'm just coming up. I'm just coming up with some different things, man. It just, it just doesn't seem. It, it don't seem like. Come on, come on. Yeah. Fireworks, like, come on. Like our jobs, I know, I know, sir. They don't even let you smoke around. I mean, firework places. Like, come on. Like, how did well, it, how did I, it all of a sudden light up? Like, come on. Well, they they so what they have indicated was, and there were firefighters on the scene, is that there was someone there that was a welder, and he was working. The this welder did not have a spotter or potentially the spotter wasn't paying attention, but apparently something caught on fire. The fire got out of control. The fire department comes in, they try to put it out and boom, they didn't, they didn't put it out in time because it got over to where it needed to, to, to cause the explosion. I mean, there was definitely a fire going on before the explosion. If you watch yeah, the video, definitely. you can see there smoke, um, which it reminds by me the of the way, trade center a lot. You know how the trade centers when we were all young and we, we were all just watching the trade center burn at first, and we were like, "Oh, it's just a building burning." You've you know, like, oh, you and then it balls. You're like, oh. so you had to say which time and burn was oh, uh, My bad, my bad. I wasn't alive the first time it was bombed. Excuse me. Yes, I think, I think you think were. Eighty nine. Eighty nine, right? <laughs> it was ninety three. It was ninety three. Oh, ninety three. You were alive. Oh. Yeah. Well, I, I didn't <laughs> see it on TV. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm yes, the trade, center is bom- the trade center was bombed once, and then it was hit by a plane, uh, hit by two planes the second time. But yes, it was, uh, yeah. So Look, the plane I, situation, yes, it was on fire, and I'm watching it, and I'm like... Oh, they kind of quickly told you, though, that uh, people are now saying a plane hit it, and then live TV, a second one hits the other one. You're like, there's some fuckery afoot, and, and it turned out to be a whole thing. It... Because you it know, was. with with the reason why everybody's thinking about it, because everybody's like, mm, oh, it's just it's just a firework plant that just you know had a whole bunch of fireworks in there, because nobody knew about this twenty seven hundred tons of whatever in there. Oh, so money of nitrate. Money nitrate. That's, that's, that makes things. Yeah, go so good. I'm over here like, whoa, that's the biggest bomb I've ever seen in my life. Like I have yeah. never seen anything that mushroom cloud, like, like. Like, honestly, it could have played an effect. I don't know how close Lebanon is. To well, but what that was but doing was basically compressing could've... air in front of your face. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it's, yeah. and for it to be on a bay, you can't compress a liquid. So that water is going like a, like a wall of destruction. Yeah. yeah. It was, uh, well, so the equivalent to um, the, if if that had been a nuclear bomb, if it had been an atomic weapon that was used at, at that point, um, because it was at ground level, that they I think the equivalent of the amount of damage that like say the Hiroshima bomb would have done at ground level um, in that same location would have only been spread out for about three blocks. You would have seen a crater for about three blocks. This particular explosion, because it was not. Uh, I mean, you, the, the fallout, of course, would have been far worse. You would have seen the fallout for 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 five or six miles outside of that. The blast, but again, being at ground level, a nuclear blast is less effective at, at at ground level. That's the reason that anytime you've ever seen like the Hiroshima explosion or whatever, that is usually set that those they set those off several hundred feet above ground for maximum carnage, basically. Um, any any testing we ever did the the u.s did with with atomic weapons was always done at you know varying levels but usually above ground again so that we got the maximum uh, efficiency of the actual blast um but yeah this this was at ground level if if it had been higher you would have seen 
much more carnage uh, from it. Um, but because uh, even even then, I think they said that it, the damage, the, the 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 structural damage that was caused by this particular explosion was was pushed like ten blocks out, even at ground level. 10 blocks is huge. That is an enormous bomb. Um, but like I said, if it had been, if it had been an atomic weapon, if it had been the, uh, the size of the Hiroshima nuclear or atomic bomb, it would have, it would only been, it would only been about three blocks is, is how big. So that's the difference in size comparison between what went off and what could have gone off. If it had been, let's say, you know, Let's say Israel decided, uh, we hate Lebanon enough. We're just going to go ahead and just drop. We're going to go ahead and explode one of our dirty bomb or our nuclear bombs that the U.S. has given us uh, in Lebanon. Which, by the way, the, the whole idea behind I just want to say the whole idea behind behind nuclear proliferate proliferate it it doesn't work unless everyone participates because you can't say Russia, you get rid of your nuclear bombs and then we'll get rid of ours. No, everybody has to do it at the same time. And there was a point in history where we were beginning to see the reduction of the number of nuclear arms and not the creation of new ones, but enter Trump and we start making more nuclear weapons. So that's where we're at. Mm -hmm. um, I did, uh, I did want, before we get out of here tonight and, uh, and of course we're going to jump over to, uh, uh, irresponsible headlines here in just a minute. But um, before we get to that, um, I have a, I, have, I wanted to read this um, with the election coming up. I know that uh, we, we tend to always have that, those groups or that group of people that are always like, you know what, if, if Trump gets reelected, I'm leaving, I'm leaving the country. We're moving out. We're going to become citizens of blah, 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 wherever. Um, so, uh, if you want to escape the United States, there are 12 countries where you can buy citizenship and a second passport. So um, this is just a list of these 12 countries. Um, St. Keats and uh, Nevis for $150,000 contribution to the country's sustainable growth fund and a minimum real estate investment of $200,000. A family of four can obtain passports. The contribution is usually around $195,000. So uh, you can go to uh, St. Kitts and uh, Nevis. St. Lucia, you can buy your citizenship for St. Lucia for $250,000 for an individual, or a family of four can get it for $300,000. It's not bad, right, St. Lucia? Uh, Antigua and Barbu Barbuda, $100,000 donation to the country's development fund, plus a real estate investment uh, will secure passports for a family of four, and a government uh, recently made it cheaper to add more children. So a passport here will get you free visas, uh, free visa access to 151 destinations. So you can go almost anywhere uh, from Antigua. Uh, Dominica, uh, contribution to the Economic uh, Diversification Fund or invest in a luxury and sustainable hotel and resorts. So you could do that. Uh, Granada, there are two different ways to obtain your citizenship, including a $150,000 contribution to the country's National Transformation Fund via the Grenadian Citizenship by Investment Program or by buying approved real estate with a minimum value of $350,000. With a passport from Grenada, uh, you can get visa-free access to many countries, including China. So if you want to go uh, to China... It, once they cut off our access from the U.S., you have to um, become a citizen of Grenada before you can go all the way to China. How, yeah, that'd be great. If you became a citizen of, of Grenada, would you be a Grenadian? A Grenadian? <laughs> that was a good would shot. Be, that was a good a shot. Grenada? <laughs> Grenada. Fair enough. I won't quit yeah. my day job. Portugal. Donations, no, no, to the Portuguese art <laughs> <laughs> donations to the Portuguese art and cultural uh, investment in business uh, or start a business or by buying real estate. Uh, you can become a citizen. You'll just need to take the Portuguese history test. It doesn't sound too bad. Uh, Malta. This is an expensive one. Malta is not cheap. Uh, $1.1 million through contributions of donations and real estate holdings. In return, you have the right to live and work in Malta and throughout the EU, you'll get a visa-free access to 183 places around the world. Cyprus. You know where Cyprus is? Mediterranean? I'm Greece. from uh, my uh, ancestry. I am Cypriot. Cypriot. That's mm. there you, know you would call yourself if you were from Cyprus, a Cypriot. It's a it actually, split uh, country. Uh, it's a split island, uh, half Muslim, half Greek. 
Catholic. Okay. Uh, so to become a citizen uh, and 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 receive a visa free uh, travel uh, for Cyprus is two point five million dollars between donations and real estate investments. It's not terrible. Pocket change. Yeah, Austria. Austria. What would you think of uh, Hitler's homeland? How much would it cost to uh, <laughs> not? I'm not, I'm not paying to squat to go there. Three point five million dollars gets you a uh, visa-free access to 187 destinations around the world, plus the right to live in all of the European Union. So you should you go be- there. That's where I'm from. <laughs> it's great. Last one is uh, well, not last one. Third to last is New Zealand. Two million dollars over a four-year period in investments in uh, in in business to for become New a Zealand. citizen. To become a citizen, two million dollars. Uh, this is just to buy your citizenship. Yeah. This isn't like now to to move to some of these countries after, let's say, Trump gets reelected. If Trump gets reelected, um, I feel like there's a potential maybe you could seek asylum as a political. Uh, refugee. refugee. Uh, last two, Turkey is a two hundred fifty thousand dollars real estate investment, and uh, Vanatu is one hundred eighty thousand dollars for a family of four. So you can get your citizenship there. Come That's on, exactly. Canada right. isn't on that list. I'm going to Canada. Why isn't Canada on the list? Seriously, do, you, do any of you? Do either of you know any Canadians? No, how, not personally. How many? I, from from what I can tell, Canada closed the border to the U.S. The U.S. didn't close yeah. the border to Canada. Canada said no, we don't want we don't want Americans in there. That is, you know, that's look again. That's where we're at. I don't I don't think Canada wants anything to do with this. In fact, if Canada yeah, had it, like, Canada's yeah, like we will send you Justin Bieber, we will send you Drake, and take all your money. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> look, look. I, I, I fully believe that Canada wants nothing to do with the U.S. If it was up to them, they'd probably just have Mexico extend all the way up. To be completely honest with you, I feel like that's that's potentially what they would prefer. Crazy. <sighs> with all of that said, I think we're going to move on. Irresponsible headlines. All right, it's time for Irresponsible Headlines. Are you guys ready for this? Yeah, you look excited. You guys look excited. Woo! All right. This <laughs> is our- this week so what i need is some irresponsible headlines and then we might move into uh something else what you think who wants to go is first this really the oh my bad no, okay, no, okay. Trick. Trick. <laughs> okay okay is this really what you're looking at when you talk graph sir <laughs> <laughs> I said, uh, journal, uh, journalist finally, uh, this is the quote, or this is the headline, journalist finally stumped by Trump. You think? <laughs> no. Uh, I wrote another one. Uh, stroke victim final moment caught on film. <laughs> Poor Jonathan Swan. <laughs> is, this is just the dick John and Crea. <laughs> This is the world. This is this this face embodies the world's reaction to president in general. That is the world's reaction to the president, just in general. Did you fall yeah, when I, you I had me this? <laughs> <laughs> this is how every parent looks at their kid when they bring that home with that first report card home. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, I I I, I thought if if state if stupid. If if the reaction to stupid had a facial expression, that that's it right there. That's exactly what that is. Oh, I've already seen this picture of Jerry Falwell Jr.'s wife. <laughs> uh, Mr. President, why it says, do you have a bill? Oh, no, no, no. Go ahead, no, go ahead, go ahead. I was about to say, why do you have a picture of Bill Clinton in this dress like Jesse? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Mr. President, it says here, uh, you only weigh 235 pounds. Is that on the moon? Mm. <laughs> you eat twice your body weight in KFC every day? You're not getting it back I just, now. Have to, I just have to assume that the look on his face is is in his head. He is He is having to ask himself, I know I'm not an American. I know I can't <laughs> vote. But how did this man win an election? Like that's 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 what I see on his. So look on his face is like I don't I can't believe you even have the mental ability to breathe. 
I just, it's, it, yeah. Uh, the aliens are going to be really disappointed when when they meet the president. That's that's for sure. That <laughs> if is. The for aliens sure. meet President Trump first. We're all doomed. <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> The paper sure. just says, "Where's the beast?" You landed. You landed your little space thing on my on my lawn. I'm gonna need taxes for that. Also, <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'll go out and talk to him. Come on, quick, pick me up, take me away. Let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> Where's the fuzzy dog from the movie with the guy with the breathing problem? Jeez. <laughs> I'll let you park your spaceship there only if you get rid of that horrible. Black Lives Matter thing that's in front of me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what's crazy is if if you watch if if you actually watch the interview on Axios, which again I'll I'll put on our website, but if you watch the interview on Axios, it starts out with a shot of Black Lives Matter Plaza, where which is directly across the street from the White House now, which is <laughs> fantastic. I love it. I love it. That's All probably right. why he's been getting on Air Force One lately. He, he don't even want to get on that helicopter no more. I don't want to see it. Oh. Oh, <laughs> there it is. You know, <laughs> it's 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 just crazy. It's just crazy. This is I you know, I and I agree with him. On, the world is a very uh, angry place. Yeah, he's right. The world is an angry place, but I feel like <laughs> this president is really bringing about a lot of the anger. Yeah, yeah you're, you're you're exasperating the situation, sir. Nobody likes me. Yeah, it's uh, he's it's it's I don't know I don't know, you know we we didn't we didn't do the same thing we normally do with the show each week was just to just to kind of like listen to <laughs> how our weeks were. Do y'all want to do that now? How was your week? Hit me with that. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, the weeks, the, it was it was a average week outside of the local stuff. But I do want to say this before we end the show, that I I have gotten a fairly famous individual to agree to be on the show with us, and the only thing that we are hammering out right now is a, a good date, a good Sunday to do it. Cool. But please stay tuned for more information. If you're from South Carolina, you will especially know this individual um, for the most part, if, especially if you're <laughs> local uh, for Columbia. But just stay on, stay on the lookout for some uh, updates and uh, we'll keep you apprised. Big secret there from Zach. Hey, you know what? We made it through an entire show. We did. Zach is a judge judger. <laughs> I thought he was about to tell me I just got I thought, an upgrade for my car. I thought I knew it was I totally, coming. I, I totally, I, I thought he was going to say something about, "Hey, you ought to <laughs> I got my t- tires white walled or something." I was, that's what I was waiting for. No, nope, it didn't wall. happen. Zach looks really irritated. <laughs> Zach, you need to make one. Zach King does not drive a Honda product. <laughs> what? Do you, yeah. What are, you gonna, what are you going to mow your grass with? Are you going to have a Craftsman or are you going to have a Honda? Which would you prefer? I will go get a GE electric mower. (laughs) Green, baby. (laughs) You like like to mow your grass in silence? (laughs) Yeah, I just want to hear the physics of the blades. (laughs) The physics of the blades. Hey, listen to the grass die. Yes, you've got too long. (laughs) Zach, real quick, what did the Braves do? The Braves, I didn't get to see the final score, but I I think the shellacking was tapped out. Well, we won the first one. Two wins. Five to two, Two and the second one one was up to eight nothing. Yeah, so it it must have ended at eight nothing. Yeah, it was. That is the the benefit of uh, only playing seven innings every doubleheader. That is that is. Great. I think I did hear, I, I was listening to the first game, and I think I did hear mention that in order for the Phillies to be able to catch up in the number of games they've missed, that a quarter of the rest of their season will be doubleheaders. They will they'll have to play at least one doubleheader every single week now until the end of the season, and that's if no more games get postponed. So well, this is our looking like the Atlanta Braves versus uh, the New York Yankees. <laughs> yeah, Braves Bring move it. on to the Yankees on Tuesday, so we'll we'll see how that goes. Braves Braves head to uh, New York for uh, for a two game set in uh, in New York, so we'll see. We'll see. 
Well, guys, thank you uh, for being on tonight. Zach King, Trent Clark, as always, Barrett Gruber. Thank you very much for listening to the All About Nothing podcast. Make sure that regardless of whatever platform you're listening to us on, you subscribe, rate, and review. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at AAN underscore pod, as well as our phone number. If you want to call and leave us a message, which I did actually get a message this week, uh, but I don't think either of you are looking for Kirby vacuum cleaner. So we're going we're gonna to let that one slide. Um, oh, phone number is 83 <laughs> 803-672-0533. You can email us at the show at the all about nothing.com. You can find us on iHeartRadio, Spotify, TuneIn Radio, Sirius XM Stitcher, Google, and Apple Podcast. And to come, uh, we will be on Pandora Radio as well. So uh that is also coming. So That's thank you nice. again for listening. You guys got anything else before we clear? Uh, have a week, everybody. All right, everybody. Lakers, there you go. All right. Everybody have a great week. Thanks for listening.